Hello and welcome to the money trade. The bad loans of our banks are back in the news. An RT activist from Gujarat had asked for comparative figures. Comparison of the bad loans between the last two decades. Or to be more precise, comparison between the two UPA governments and the two NDA governments that followed. The RTI reply from the Reserve Bank of India, what shall I say, unbelievable or astonishing. Bad loans from the Narendra Modi government's tenure surpassed Manmohan Singh era by a huge march. It's 25 lakh crore versus a meager 4 lakh crore. From the financial year 2014-15 to 2020-23, the bad loans were 24.95 lakh crore. Whereas for the former period, it was just 3.76 lakh crore in bad loans. The almost 25 lakh crore bad loans or in technical terms, non-performing assets, it's not only has surpassed the UPA government's period, but it's an all-time record. Our Prime Minister given a promise to the all over India and Indian people to we will bring a black money. This is almost uh, uh, 11.4 trillion dollars uh, to India. And we will work for it. This is an assurance from the side of uh, our Prime Minister. So after a long time, it's a now year, after a now year, we did not get any update from the particular black money. And we are borrowing more and more monies from the World Bank and other uh, institutions. And also, uh, we are giving a waiver to uh, loan who is defaulters. So that I want to know the, what is the exact situation of the loan waiver, the NP, NPA accounts. That's why I did an RTA to the uh, RBA and wanted to know what is the situation, current scenario. But there is a glitch. Some say that there is a calculation error. The RBA reply had two heads for describing the non-performing assets, scheduled commercial banks and public sector banks. They have given two columns. The first column is for the public sector bank. Second column is for the scheduled commercial banks, which includes the public sector banks. But somebody has totaled both and derived at a figure of 24. That means only the figures for the commercial banks should be taken. Then the figure comes down to 14.56 lakh crore from the 24.95. And that of the UPA government era becomes 2.17 lakh crore. Still, there's a huge difference. Isn't it? A difference of more than 12 lakh crores. 12.39 lakh crore to be precise. Means the NGA government in the first year itself caused as much as bad debts as the total 10 years of Manmohan Singh era. Now the question is, who are the defaulters? About half of it, that is 7.4 lakh crore of the return of loans belong to large industries and services. But which are those industries? Well, we will never know. It's a secret. The Reserve Bank of India does not disclose the name of the defaulters whose loans have been written off, except in the case of willful defaulters. The willful defaulters, there is a problem in the reporting system itself. Most of the banks uh, don't report uh, cases as willful defaulters uh, because there is a st uh, strict procedure they have to follow. So to avoid that, they just uh, don't classify it as defaulters, but not as willful defaulters. If you see any time the total figures, out of the total NPA, the willful defaulters will be not even 25%. That's So the rest of it, what is being written off, the Reserve Bank, though it has the details, they don't share it with the public. Technically, bad loans or non-performing assets are not forgotten. They are not literally written off. There are mechanisms in place to get back the money through mediation and settlement. We have a law, the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Court. But everything, every such things, favor the big guns. Normally, 80 to 85% money is written off, even after the mediation. I will tell you a story. Anil Ambani, the not so successful Ambani, had a company which was in huge debt, Reliance Communications. It had a net debt of more than 40,000 crore. It was sold for just rupees 3,720 crore. You know who acquired it? By his own brother, Mukesh Ambani, 
the successful umpire. And in the process, the public sector banks alone lost more than 9,000 crore. Similar write-offs are taking place almost every day. And I have told uh, when this insolvency bank and bankruptcy code was brought in itself, that it is not going to help the banks, it is only going to help the defaulters. And in one way, the defaulters are selling and another uh, corporate is buying. So both ways they are benefited. Suppose I have taken a loan now from ICICI bank. Next I go to some other bank. Here my loan is closed through some compromise or through NCLT and uh, my civil score is clean. Then I go to another bank without knowing that this fellow has uh, history. Then other bank will give loan and that cycle continues. And the corporate, they keep changing the names of the companies, changing the names of the board of directors in such a way that they can cheat. And there is a big gang of corporates who are continuously looting them. If you also look at the total money reclaimed, it's the same pathetic situation. In the last nine years, out of the 14.53 lakh crore bad debts, only 2.4 lakh crores could be recovered. Yes, just 2.4 lakh crore. Think of a common man who had defaulted in his home loan. He will be harassed, threatened, and in the end, if he cannot cough up the money, he will be thrown out of his house. Whereas the corporations, the big corporates, have a different set of rules. They will dictate terms and will always have their way. I will point out, sir. The Reserve Bank of India, during the tenure of Raghuram Rajan, had issued a circular preventing loans of more than 10,000 crore by a single bank to the corporations. But it was not implemented. Second, the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Finance had come down heavily on insolvency and bankruptcy court, said that it was only favoring the defaulters. They listed measures to change the course, but nothing happened. Whereas the RBI this year has brought out a new circular. It says that banks should try to reach a compromise with not only normal defaulters, but also with fraudsters. Yes, those who willfully cheated the banks. Now banks can and should sit with them and try to arrive in a compromise. In short, the system allows every big player to hush up the bad loans, then go to a new bank or to the same bank and get more loans. I hope you have got an idea of why the bad debts of the banks have set an all-time record in the last nine years. Now let's look into some important events from the world of finance. The National Financial Reporting Authority has initiated an inquiry against SR Batliboy. The SR Batliboy is the current auditor for Adani Power, Adani Green, Adani Wilmer, ACC and Ambuja Simmons. Means most of the Adani companies are being audited by this firm. The news was reported by Bloomberg but has been denied by Adani. It says nothing has been happened. The Union government has cut down the fertilizer subsidy drastically for the rabi season that runs till the end of March. The amount sanctioned by the Union government is just 22,303 crore, whereas in the last year, the amount was more than double, 51,875 crore. India is trying hard to avoid carbon levy for goods entering the United Kingdom. The attempt is to get exemption for Indian products under a proposed free trade agreement with the UK. The carbon law tax is all set to roll out soon in the country. European Union has already implemented the carbon tax system. In a move to strengthen governance in private sector banks, the RBA has directed them to have at least two whole team directors. Banks that do not have such directors include some famous names, Indus Indian Bank, Tamil Nadu Mercantile Bank, Catholic Syrian Bank and South Indian Bank. Well, that's all from us. Goodbye till we meet again.